Hey everyone, in this video we'll, we'll take a look at what is added to a simple template for Visual C Sharp console application. So let's go ahead and create a new console application project. Select C Sharp, console application, CS Tutorial 2, and click OK. So let's go ahead and take a look at the basic code that's added to our Visual C Sharp console application. So let's start off with, let's add a comment. So I'm going to add a single line comment and this will say this is the main method where our program starts. Comments are lines of code that are ignored by the compiler. So when we go to compile and build our application into an executable file, the compiler will go ahead and just skip this line of code. So it's really just information for us and other programmers who might look at source code and need to know more about what's happening. And there's there's really two types of comments, single line comments, and you can see a single line comment here. You can actually add single line comments after code, however best practices state that Single line comment should typically be on the line before the code that you're describing with your comment. In the main method, I'll add a simple output statement. I'll say console.write line. Hello world. Now, we can also add what are called delimited comments. These are comments which can be multi line comments. They start with a forward slash asterisk. And they end with an asterisk, asterisk forward slash. Now anything between this forward slash asterisk and this asterisk forward slash is going, going to again be ignored by the compiler. So we can have really multiple lines. Oftentimes programmers put a header at the top. with information about the program. Sometimes companies have standards for documenting the program and also including updates on the file. So you'll maybe include the date and what type of change you made. <clears throat> this is called a delimited com comment. Note that when we add multi multiple lines in Visual Studio, Visual Studio automatically adds an asterisk to the beginning of each line. That asterisk is not required. You could have a multi-line comment without those asterisks. Although I do think it makes it look a little more readable. So it's not a bad thing to have those asterisks at the beginning. Just know that they're not required. Okay, at the beginning of our file we have using directives. So using Visual Studio we have access to, to several or you know, lots of libraries of code. Using libraries we can avoid reinventing the wheel. So something that is complicated in code we need to write may have already been done in a library. We can actually link to those libraries with using directives. So you can see here we've got using system, using system.collections.generic, using system.link, and using system.text. These are Microsoft.net framework libraries that we can link to which provide code for running our console application. You might also use libraries that you've created or someone on your team has created. You might again use framework libraries like the Microsoft.NET framework libraries or you might include a third-party library. Maybe you've uh, at, maybe you've purchased a third-party library which includes some interesting code into your project. Again, you need to make sure that the files reside in, in a specific location and then include these using directives. Uh, the next thing to talk about is our class name. <clears throat> so each class that we are creating is called a user-defined class. We'll always start our user-defined class with what's called the class header. It's a simple line with a key with the keyword class. 
and then an identifier which we're creating, which should match the file. So there should be a file called program.cs, which this resides in. <clears throat> and if you're if you're following Microsoft's naming conventions, we should always use upper camel case for the class name. And then following the class header, notice that there's an open curly brace. This open curly brace defines the beginning of our class body. It should always have a matching closed curly brace at the end. You'll notice that it, if I click on the curly brace, it highlights the closing curly brace. And also notice that indent, indent, using indentation, we've aligned the open curly brace with the closed curly brace. That makes our code much more readable. Uh, from experience, nesting curly braces is traditionally one of the one of the most common stumbling points for newer programmers. So, let's talk about a couple strategies you can use to ensure the proper open and closed curly braces and, and proper nesting. So, a first strategy again is to use proper indentation. Visual Studio makes this pretty easy by automatically indenting our code for us as we're typing it. The only time it's really not automatic is when we have a syntax error, such as a, curl, a missing curly brace. You can change the indentation in a couple ways. First, first of all, you can highlight some codes. If I highlight all of these lines of code just by left clicking, holding down my mouse, and scrolling over it, I can actually change the indentation by either clicking the tab key to increase indent or holding down shift and clicking tab to decrease the indent. So now we've modified the indentation. It's not correct at this point. Uh, we'll fix it in a second. There's another way which we can use Visual Studio's ability to create this indentation for us. And the way we do that is go ahead and click on the Edit menu, Advanced, and you'll see two options, Format Document or Format Selection. Now, Format Selection is going to just modify the lines that we have selected. Format Document, though, is going to it's going to indent, change our indentation for the entire document. So, see if I've removed all the indentation. I'll click Edit, Advanced, Format Document. This I have found particularly useful if you're copying some code from online, which is is fine to a certain extent. Copy that code into your code editor. Uh, sometimes it removes the indentation and the formatting. Click Edit, Advanced, and Format Document. Visual Studio takes care of all of the indentation for you. Now, the one one time when this is, it won't work for you is if you have a syntax problem. In that case, you're going to have to figure out, you know, the nesting and open curly braces and closed curly braces for your code. Another uh, very easy way to see where your open and closed curly braces are residing is again to click on the open curly brace. I don't know if in the video if you can see it, but when I click on the open curly brace for the main method, it highlights the closed curly brace. If I click on the open curly brace for program, it highlights the closed curly brace. Notice that it the nesting for this program is proper, so we have a namespace and the namespace open and close curly brace enclose all of the program. Now we have our class, class program. And everything inside of that class resides within the open and curly open and close curly brace. Next we have our main method and every line of code that belongs in the main method resides within the open and close curly brace. If we did not have proper curly braces, if we removed one of them accidentally, and you click on the open curly brace for the main method, you see, well, it looks like it's not aligned, and it looks like it's highlighting what should be the class curly brace. And if I click on the class open curly brace, it highlights the namespace closed curly brace. And if I highlight the open curly brace for namespace, it's not going to do anything because there is no closed curly brace. So Microsoft has included a lot of help with those curly braces, but it's very important to understand that the, what they're doing, that they are really the open and close of the main method body or the program, uh, the class the class body, uh, and to understand how to manipulate those open and curly braces so that we have proper nesting, proper indentation so that our code is readable. Okay, let's move on to the next statement in our C Sharp source code, which was generated again by our console application template. Let's look at the main method header. So in every console application we're going to have a main method. It is a specialized method and, and we'll talk more in depth about methods in a later tutorial. What's important to, to understand at this point 
is that every time we run our console application, it's going to start by running the main method. So this is really the point, the starting point for our program's execution. So if we want to output some statement, console.write line hello world or console.write line hello from James. We need to put these statements inside the main method. This is really the starting point for our application. So I'm going to go ahead and hit control F5. And again, it's going to output these statements, which we created right in that main method body. Okay, that's it. Just wanted to take a quick look at the code that's generated from our console application template. In the next video, we'll cover formatting our strings. We'll talk about this output statement, console.write line or console.write, and, and how to modify what's actually being output. Thanks.